Welcome back. Thank you once again for hanging out with us. This is the one and only IT in the D show, your look into the Detroit tech scene. I am your host, Bob Waltonspiel, always hanging out with co-host producer extraordinaire, Randy Walker. Guest this week, Paul Blatt, you might remember him. He used to be the CEO of JVS Human Services, but they've gone through a merger. They've gone through a name change. They got a new direction. It's one of my favorite nonprofits in Detroit, and we're uh, super honored to have him on today to talk about the great things he's doing for the tech community in Metro Detroit. You can find us online at IT in the D. Dot com and do us a favor, give us a like on the socials and subscribe to us everywhere. Find podcasts are sold. And don't forget, check out meetup.com slash IT in the D. It's going to be the last of a three-part series at Nancy Whiskey's down in Corktown. They're going to move venues. You guys should definitely get out there. Third Thursday from five until question mark. Um, no speakers, no uh, anything else, just some uh, good old IT folks hanging around. Uh, bring your business cards or don't. Should be a great time. And uh, rumor has it, Randy and I might be picking up a few rounds. Thank you to our sponsor. It's the second annual Cybersecurity Summit. It's being held Tuesday, August 16th in 2022. Um, you can l- earn up to eight continuing education credits by attending the day in full. And guess what? It's free if you use code IT22D. All caps, not the 22, but the letters. If you go to cybersecuritysummit.com slash summit slash Detroit 22, I know it's a a little rough, but we will put it in the show notes. That's cybersecuritysummit.com slash summit slash Detroit 22. Register with code IT22D and you get a free pass. It's at the Marriott downtown. Uh, I heard it's a great time. So yeah, hope to see you out there. Paul, how you doing, buddy? How they treating you? I'm great. Great. How about yourself? You know what? It's uh, finally feeling back to normal. Um, Funny thing is we told you that you were on during the pandemic and you totally didn't even remember. We used to always do uh, in studio and have a good old time and crack some beers. And now uh, we're all doing these remote, but that's quite all right. It's, It's great to see anyway. You know, it's great to see you. And then you show me that picture on Facebook and my face was a lot thinner. I don't know what this <laughs> pandemic has done to me. <laughs> hey, they don't they didn't call it the COVID nineteen for nothing, you know what I mean? I, I wish it was only nineteen. <laughs> right. Yeah, trust me, I'm almost um I'm, I'm yeah, right behind you, man. It's been nuts. How's uh, everything good? Family healthy, uh work is good. You know, things are amazing. Things are really great. And and you know, we we uh we're so excited about what's happening and, and really being able to continue to serve the community uh, the way that, that JVS did formerly for 82 years uh, and now uh, merging with, with Kadima we, uh, in our new name, it, it's just so much great things happening for, for so many people. So who was, I, didn't, I wasn't familiar with Kadima. Who was yeah. Kadima? So Kadima was another nonprofit in the area. Their focus was serving uh, people with severe and persistent mental health challenges. Uh, and Kadima has historically done residential services, owning 20 different homes and keeping people safe. Uh, some of the homes that, that, we, uh, that we support are 24-7, keeping people um, safe, the community safe, uh, and bringing quality of life. Some of our other homes are just people that just need a little bit of supports, as little as uh, 10 hours a month. So it's a big range of services that we provide. Uh, but uh, so that was that was who they were. They were uh, been around about 40 years. Uh, actually, as we were finishing this merger, all of a sudden, one of our board members comes up, and she was a founder of Kadima and a former JVS employee. Wow! And she comes up, yeah, I was like, what, you know? And she's like, you realize that Kadima was born from uh, from a program that JVS ran forty years ago, and it was helping people with mental health challenges. And the need was so great, but the community just wasn't right. And so they actually create the the JVS leadership at the time helped set up this other nonprofit. And 38 years later, here we are coming back together. So everything's where it should be. Crazy. And you guys changed your name. Talk to me about that. Yeah. So uh, as our boards were talking and they were like, um, so you can stay JVS Kadima, which 
you know, a lot of people didn't even know what JVS was, um, and 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 really not a f- enough people knew what Kadima was. It was either JVS Kadima, keeping both of them, which just sounds cumbersome as hell, right? right? Or go out and find a new name. And so, as we were really understanding who we were, uh, we were our our consultants were working with us, and they were like, everything that that this organization does help somebody bridge from where they are to where they want to be. Um, and, you know, I mean, we're, we've been, we're founded by the Jewish community. And so we really wanted to keep some of those roots there. So Gesher, Gesher Human Services is the name of our new organization. And Gesher is the Hebrew word for bridge. So we're Gesher Human Services, the bridge to where you want to be. I like it. I was wondering, so when I looked at Gesher, I'm like, where in the world did that come from? And, uh, you know, I speak German and there's a lot of Hebrew words and German words that are very similar. So I was looking at that going, I don't know what that means, but no, that totally makes sense. No, it's, it's a great name. Um, so I guess you guys, so it's, what's funny is people keep saying, who's Mr. Gesher. That's what he wanted. (laughs) That's the first thing I thought was like, how how big was the check Mr. Gesher wrote? You know what I mean? Um, (laughs) And, and anyone, anyone that wants us to rename ourselves, just bring that check in, and we'll take care of the renaming again. I don't have a new sign on the outside of the buildings yet, so yeah, we're you're going to okay. be the TCF Bank Human Services then next <laughs> week. So. <laughs> or in Huntington now, too. <laughs> right? So I, I get the, the, the brand. What's the branding effort go, that has to go into something like this? Because obviously, your organization being what 80 years old, Kadima being over mm-hmm. 40, like that's a lot of history that you have to like. It's almost like day one, right? You know, part of it is the folks that know us. I mean, we serve, last year we served over 12,000 humans, right? And so we know that the people that we all touch De- and that that's we... That's not all in Detroit, was it? Detroit metro area. That's, that's 12,000 uh, people in metro Detroit? Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of folks, right? And some of it's under our brand and some of it's not. We operate in Oakland County. We operate the Michigan Works Office out in Waterford. Um, and partner with them in that. Um, we do that Oakland 80 is an effort that's going on in Oakland County, uh, helping uh, Oakland County residents get degrees and, and secure degrees. So that's another effort that we do. Down in Detroit, we operate at uh, Durfee Innovation Society. We do a Detroit at Works office and helping people in, in a Detroit at Works office. So those are some, some big spaces that we serve. Uh, you know, like the other thing is earlier you said, I, or I was talking about being connected to the Jewish community, of that 12,000 people, and part of the reason for the name change as well is 3,000 of them are Jewish, but the other 9,000 are our greater community, and it's what we're supposed to be doing. And by going away from a J, um, we really wanted to let people know and, and staff and future staff know that they're welcome to come and get served by us. No, it's great. It's great. And how I uh, originally got introduced to you guys and how I kind of fell in love with the organ, what you guys are doing. And I always appreciate, you know, you had a small IT tie, but it actually was a little bit bigger. But you took basically recycled electronics and the funding that you took from that. And, and you know, and obviously with dinners and, and other things and, and fundraisers, but like you would like retrain folks to get careers in IT, get jobs at Amazon and people that normally wouldn't have an opportunity like i think the first story you told was a guy that lost both of his arms in an electrical accident and like got a job as a picker at amazon and i was like this is you know i i'll back i'll do whatever i can to be behind you guys throughout this step it's it's very cool uh what you guys do but how has the what, what i was leading up to was how has the pandemic and everything kind of shifted i know you mentioned mental health and i've been you know nothing but reading how you know the lockdown kind of messed everybody up a little bit in the head. I, I can't imagine for someone that needed, you know, that had issues before. Talk to me about the shift, I guess, in, in post-pandemic and, and how you're helping people. You know, it, and it's been so long. A lot of the things that we started to do back in 20 feel like it's just the way we've always done business by this point, right? It's hard to look back and go, oh, that was new. Um, but, you know, I mean, a part of our work is, serving individuals with developmental disabilities. And we weren't sure if we um, if we were really gonna be able to connect with them. We couldn't get them in person, right? So we started doing, we started doing um, different supports via Zoom. And we had folks that were 
popping in for a couple hours a day just so they had some socialization. Um, and, uh, and now we're back in person. You know, the, what, one of the, another area that we serve folks with uh, um, disabilities is we, we manage um, 5 million square feet of um, office space. We do the, uh, the cleaning of the, that office space. So out at Detroit Arsenal and down at Cadillac Place, the IRS building, um, when those buildings were operating during the height of the pandemic, our folks had to be out there. I mean, that was essential workers. Um, and so we, we were there with them and we were making sure that, that as our government workers were going into the buildings that they had a clean space to be working in. Um, and it was a story I didn't tell too early because I was a little scared that somebody somebody was going to get a little sick and that was going to be a really bad uh, um, sure. PR. Sure. But it worked out great, and you know we did a great job of keeping people safe as we could, and 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 we kept government people safe during that time. Um, you know the hard part is, I mean, you guys probably see this more than me. Um, this workplace, this this. Um, this workforce currently is is um, is difficult to define, right? Trying to find people, getting people to work. You were saying, you know, me. It's people got flexibility; they don't want to give it up again. Uh, I don't know what it is. Uh, you want to hear a strange fact, right? So I've been trying to figure out, like, is there that many fewer humans that are doing the work, and that's why we have so many job openings, right? Um, and I. Um, I, I was I was reading this thing. It was the labor participation rate in the metro area. Have you seen this? I saw the 20, national one. 2019, the Detroit, which is horrible, which is behind the rest of the nation. In 2019, the Detroit metro area was at 57.2% uh, labor participation rate. Any guess where we are right now? In Detroit? Me, Detroit national, metro. I think we're 62, if I'm not mistaken. Sounds right. Yeah. Uh, and it, so we are 50, 57.2 before the pandemic. Okay. We are 57.2 still. Wow. <laughs> but I mean, it dipped and it came back. Because if I remember looking at the graph, we're at like almost sure. a 20-year low. But it dipped. It super dipped in 2020. And then it kind of leveled back to, to 2019 levels. So that, that would make sense. But that's, you know, someone told me, like, you know, unemployment's at 3.6. And I go, yeah, but workforce participation's at a 20-year low. You know, well, not uh, not counting 2020, you know what I mean, for normal work. But I think you're onto something with the whole, you know, I think people right now, they want to work from home, but they want to be able to go to that office once in a while on there. And they want to, like, dictate their own terms. You know what I mean? It's, so it's kind of, I do. It's, a, it's a super finicky workforce right now. Um, yeah, but it's hard to serve dinner when you're working from home. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, and here's the thing, like, I don't know why, but you think, like, when me and my wife were able to go out to dinner the, for the first times on, like, patios, we were so grateful and thankful. And, like, the, the waiters and waitresses would walk by and they were, like, on eggshells, like, hey, here you go, sir. Sorry, it's a little late. I'm like, you're fine. Like, we're just, we're so happy that we don't have to cook for ourselves, you know? Um, yeah. And it just, how people could be mean to, to, to those, you know, to, it makes zero sense to me as a human being. Like, it's so difficult. I know it's difficult, but you're taking it on the way the wrong people. You know? Yeah. Well, we, it, we, people are just angry. So we, so, so I'll let, I'll let you, I'll actually answer your question from about 12 minutes ago. You asked me a question about the mental health yeah, and I just totally went on some different rant because, you know, why would I ever want to answer somebody's question? Um, so, you know, part of with this, I was describing the work that Kadima does and part of the Kadima work that we were doing uh, before the merger and as part of Gesher is it's called Clubhouse. And part of that work is, making a place for people with mental health challenges to be with be in the community and interacting with humans we're able to bring that back and and what we do is is folks own the clubhouse 
They are responsible for the food served, the cleaning of the clubhouse, how the day is going to go, all the activities. So we have folks that are really using some amazing skills. We're growing hydroponic uh, lettuce so we can then use lettuce it. Lettuce in quotes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, mental health. You know, right, take right. care of. Whatever works. <laughs> um but part of that is that folks would then go and get jobs. And so in just in the last eight months, we've helped five people um, gain employment and, and take those skills that they're doing and move them into the workplace, which is just exciting. You know, I love uh, that. So I got to ask you this, because tying into that, I remember talking to David Franco. He's with Exceptional Cat. I mean, he kind of does what you do, but he, he it's more focused on getting IT certs, Cisco certs, CompTIA certs, right? Like really fo- hyper-focused, but it's also with people with autism. So he's hitting a, another, I was going to say another spectrum, no pun intended, but pardon the, but he's hitting another group of, you know, individuals that could use help. And th- his comment was something to the effect of, it's not so much getting them a job. That's the easy part. The hard part is finding a manager I don't want to say equipped, but like that's knowledgeable to be able to work with somebody that, you know, needs more than the the other person to the left. Right. And he was saying like, they almost have to bring like, Hey, you know, this company would, you, 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 you know, you can hire these three people, but you're also going to need to hire a liaison between their managers and them that understands their, 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 their requirements and their needs. And it it becomes almost now it's like, okay, I need another head count. You know what I mean? Um, but that was the only way that they were successful. Um, talk to me about on your side of the fence. Are you seeing those same issues, challenges? And I guess like, so, are you? How are you yeah. addressing them? So that that's always been something that we've done, and in, in helping um, that right. It's part of it is the training. Sometimes it is that that the folks that we're introducing, whether it be mental health challenges or it be people with intellectual developmental disabilities, once they get in and they get to know their jobs. Right. So they need a little bit extra training and we don't want to put that burden on an employer. So we'll send our team with that new employee to learn the job and to support that person at the beginning. No, no extra expense on to the employer. Um, And then as that person starts to do well, we fade away. Um, Folks with 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 mental health issues. It's not always about the I mean many very intelligent folks. Sure. Um, and it's not about the necessarily learning the job. Um, sometimes uh, folks just have medications that need to be shifted, um, that they're experiencing an episode. And so they have to fade. They sometimes can't get to work for those reasons. And part of what we do is we have the coach, we have the person that's going to go in and help to maintain that person's job while they're getting themselves realigned and and healthy again to come back to work. So So, that's what we're looking for from employers. I mean, do you, I don't understand the legality of it. This is kind of maybe a stupid question, but how much do you have to disclose? It's... Right. I mean, it's um, when we're walking in and we're sharing, yeah. um, we, you know, we sh- with the, the individuals tend to share what it is that's going on with them. Okay. Right. I mean, that's if we're there, obviously somebody has something going on. Right. Right. That that's the reason we're helping them out. Um, and an employer needs to know that. And I think it's really about it's, it's about being honest. It's not about going into details of that person, but more of. At times, you know, you know, if you have a bad back, well, let's let's shift it and make it a little bit easier. Yeah. If you have a bad back and you say, "There's times I can't get my ass out of bed," right, right, and the employer goes, "Yeah, you're dynamic, you're great, and we'll we'll work with you in that space." And it's it's a similar kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, because that you know, I went through. I don't think I've talked to you since I got sick, but I had knee surgery, got septic. I got, you know, lived in a recliner for a year. I've been relearning how to walk. and I'm still, you know, pretty nasty limp right now. And I'm still trying to figure out how to walk again. And I just got a um, a new place of employment six months ago, almost to the day. And I really, I was like, right at the end of the interview, I was like, hey, candidly, I'm, you know, I have a hard time walking. I'm not going to lie. Like, you know, I can fly, you know what I mean? I'll just, I need help though, but just, I just want, and they're like, oh, don't even, I don't even care. Don't even tell me. You know what I mean? They're just like, don't, you know, and I said, well, it might impact how I can, you know, I can still go to play, you know, I can still travel. I can still, you know, do everything I need to do, you know, get the job. And they go, don't worry about it. You're fine. 
and it it was refreshing because I. But that's my knee. I couldn't imagine if, like, cause a mental illness, like you, you can't rehab out of that, right? Or you can you can try to, but you know, I try, I'm ignorant on this topic. I feel really weird asking some of these questions, but I want to get it out because, like, <laughs> no, I can't be the only one that you know thinks some. Like, this is the first, you know, you don't think about this stuff if you're not dealing with it. You know what I mean? Yeah, and and that that's what it is, though, and that's that's part of the conversation is is that people are afraid to ask the question. Um, and there's stigma attached to it instead of asking the question and saying, so what happens? So if somebody that is experiencing severe depression, right, mm-hmm. and they've done a great job and done a lot of hard work of um, getting them their medication aligned and really staying on the regimen that they need to keep themselves healthy, then they're they're not going to have an issue that you know. But every now and then, our bodies change. Something happens. You need a medication adjustment, and that can really throw somebody off. Yeah. Right? And so it's that kind of thing. And 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 the reality is, you're hiring somebody because of the skills. Sure. Right. Sure. And if their skills are good enough, then they're even going to put up with you. Well, I had one. You know, my first like technical <laughs> managerial job, right? Where I had you know I, I had responsible for a team. The first first conversation I had with one of with our, the top engineer on the floor was basically like, listen, I'm ex-military. I got wicked PTSD. Um, you know, I'm bipolar. Um, I think I got it under control. Please don't mistake my passion for anger. You know, I get fired up when I'm, when I'm on, you know, when I'm on, when I'm rolling. And, uh, I said, don't worry, I got you. So like the whole time he was like, Hey man, I'm just going to, I'm going to code in the dark in the basement at three in the morning and I'm going to roll in late. I'm like, dude, I got you. You know what I mean? I think, that added, you know, some people, I'm not say that not everyone's that understanding, but I was like, you do your best work, you know, figuring out when you do your best work and just put them in situations where they can succeed. It wasn't hard to manage them. He was the best guy I had, you know what I mean? Hands down, but you know, just a couple curveballs. So what deal with it? You know what I mean? And, and some of what we've seen is this working at home, this new way in which we've learned to all learn to work. And as much as I would prefer to be in person all the time if I could just because that's how that's where I get my energy from we've seen that folks with different disabilities have actually gotten more job opportunities whether it be a physical disability that getting to the office as you're talking about with your knee um, is is a challenge or it could be that you know transportation for those individuals because they couldn't drive and in the Detroit area it's so hard to get around without driving and Buses yep. are, are not right, that now they have more opportunities if there's a physical thing that they can be working and working from home and doing really meaningful work. Yeah. And that's, you know, again, that's the hard part is like, what, where's the balance? Finding that balance. And I think, well, I guess, you know, everyone knows that, you know, and again, working with people with mental health issues, do they, I know it's a, it's a broad stroke, but like understanding that balance and where I'm good and where I'm not, is that, is it an easy as just speaking about it or is like, or is it a struggle? Again, I'm, I'm so not, not knowledgeable in the space, but like, you know, is it something they can candidly just say, Hey, listen, you know what I mean? I do my best work at three in the morning in the dark, you know what I mean? Or, or is it just kind of like this thing ebbs and flows? Cause that's, you know, everything I've heard it always, you know, you never know when it's going to strike or you don't, you know, when it happens or, you know, again, the medication needs in it, you know, adjustment, you know, I guess, how is that, you know, articulated? I, I think it's every individual says it says their own story. Um, and I think that's the most important thing is that um, that we're all looking at individuals as individuals, whether it's uh, male or female, whatever color a person is, right, that we're accepting and we're welcoming people based on what they can bring to our workplace. And I think that's that's the really important message. Um, and, um, you know, pe- individuals who have different challenges navigate that differently, right? Sure, uh, sure. We, we work with folks that are formerly incarcerated. And okay. so when, when they're walking into the workplace, they're, they navigate how they're going to share that with the employer and what how much they share because, you know, just really knowing how that individual is going to respond to that. So all of those situations, you know, our, our society puts a lot of barriers up for folks and, and every individual has to navigate how to how to make that work for the employer as well as the individual. Yeah, I always wondered that too. Like when you check if you're, you know, on the applications, always check if you're a felon. 
Um, yeah, it's not an automatic disqual, is it? I guess it depends on the posi- depends on the company. Depends on the company, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, some companies, you know, people formerly incarcerated are great because they they have some regiment to them. They yeah. they want that job, right? Um, it's it's interesting because when sometimes we have more trouble. Uh, white collar offenders than we do murders when we're helping folks because white collar offenders you don't know if you can trust that individual yeah right? uh, especially well, if you're talking because it's fraud or tax evasion right. you know sure yeah. sure sure so again we people people need to to hire folks in the place that they're most comfortable with now how is um is there i don't want to see directives but like i know a lot of like the the you know ID and E is huge at, our, at my company right now, and I think that's awesome. And you know inclusion and, and diversity and is how how is it is it shifted a little bit towards you know mental issues, handicaps, autism, right? Has it um, where they're kind of like trying to do the reach out? I guess what type of companies are 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 kind of jumping? Is is it everybody or is it just a small amount? I'm just curious as to kind of are are those getting instilled in their ID and E uh, initiatives? Yeah, I think um, I think every company. I, I I think there's a lot of things that are more front and center right now, right? When the economy was getting better before before we hit COVID, and unemployment was really low, all of a sudden business because it met a business need. People were saying, "Hey, we're we're open a little bit more to hiring somebody with a disability because we need bodies, we need humans in here." Um, when it started getting into um, Looking at uh, you know some of the events uh, with with the murder of George Floyd and and that summer right um, you know there was really a looking at, at companies were looking at themselves and how they presented and how they acted uh, related to race so I think you know it, it's hard for companies to do it all at one time um, I I think right now lack of employees helps to you know helps raise awareness but there isn't any real big push right now for um for uh, i I haven't seen anyone going hey our focus is people with disabilities sure you know i got a meeting i got a meeting next week with uh, a large insurance company that that they just started a employee resource group in that space and so um we want to have that conversation and help folks get through there i love it so how do um how are you finding companies? Are you are you are you just banging on the phones? Are you networking? I mean, are you guys pretty well known to this point where you don't have to? I couldn't imagine, you know, those conversations are tough, man. I, you know, are you are you out just pounding the pavement like a good old sales boy like me? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, you know, I, th- I think you know. So this is this is where I get a little bit sad, and I, I I hate to admit it. Like, so in some of our areas where we need more staff to be able to support the individuals in the workplace, we don't have enough individuals there willing to do our work. Okay. Uh, and so it's hard to grow. There's there's more opportunities probably than we're we've ever had afforded to us. And I can't meet the needs of business, and I, I I can't knock on an employer's door and not be able to deliver. So we're taking it in a real iterative way. Uh, we're really having meaningful conversations with employers and with businesses. And if we can't meet the needs ourselves, we have some great partners out there. Um, you know, Step Down in Wayne County and New Horizons and Autism Alliance of Michigan. You know, there these are these are great organizations that Judson Center, Goodwill. I mean, there's so many that I can name, right? Yeah. Um, and we all we all are really, and, and it's exciting because we're all in a place where we're we're acting in a in a very supportive role. And even though that's our competitors, right? You wouldn't necessarily be bringing your competitors to the table with you. For us, it's about making sure that the people that we're serving are and and the community is getting to work in a meaningful way. And so, if we can't do it, we call on one of our partners to help us out. Well, that that should be the telltale sign if you're doing the good work or not. If you know, obviously, you're competing for donation dollars, but if you're like you know turning stuff away and just you know, poo-pooing it because you can't is one thing. So you, can you just not find the help or is it a funding thing? 
it's it's finding the help it's finding yeah. people that that you know we unfortunately because our funding is some of it's state funded and federally funded and some of it and a lot of its donations um we we don't have we can't we can't compete with the marketplace and when the marketplace really when restaurants and 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 retail was really raising their their you know their wages uh, because they need to get folks in there to keep their business open. We 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 didn't have we 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 weren't able to create more biz more dollars just because we were um, because we had more need. What's right? funny, you know, so, the whole everyone always scoffed and laughed when Bernie Sanders was fighting for the fifteen dollar minimum wage, and who would have thunk all it took was a pandemic to make it happen? <laughs> um, you drive by some of these fast food places and you're like eighteen bucks an hour, like might work here on the weekends yeah. you know what i mean like it's you know granted it's probably the hardest work to do and they get the least amount of respect but like at least uh these people are getting compensated properly for some of these jobs now when my 16 year old goes to work and she starts at 15 and four months later they're like oh we're giving you a raise you get another dollar and i'm like how is that possible uh, so it's hard for us to compete in that space because the way we're funded, the money doesn't just raise up because it doesn't. It, sure. We don't. Bottom line is different, right? And where where we how we get there. So, um, so that's one of our challenges, and where we're trying lots of different ways to get folks in there with us. Um, you know, we we would love to serve more people in our community. We just need to get some. And and our work is hard. I mean, our coaches that are out there with folks, it's hard work. Uh, and and it's really rewarding work, um, but but they they have to uh, you know they, they, it's not it it's not just prepping food which prepping food is hard work sure but it's caring for another human while doing it and so um, anyone that's out there wants to talk to us about mm-hmm. employment we got great opportunities in, out there we'll definitely try to get the uh, definitely get the word out yeah some of the hardest jobs I've ever heard people working were like. Uh, I don't want to, like the remote, not, not like that. It's they're not a nurse, but they're like almost like the helping hands. I knew a couple of people that did that for a living, and that that is not. I, I you know sometimes you wouldn't wish it on your worst enemy. Some days, so though, you know, but they you know they were super passionate about it because they either had a family member or someone. I think you know sometimes when you tug on a heartstring, you know what I mean. It's easier to get people to work. You know what I mean if they had to deal with it themselves or it's a, it's a passion i think you know and i think that might be the missing you know to find those kind of people it can't be easy though right. um yeah and and i mean we look we have we have 80 people that are supporting supporting people every day and and they are they're my heroes they're the ones that are out there really making a difference in people's lives and i appreciate them as much as i can and we we can add another 30 or 40 to really really move the needle for people with disabilities and mental health challenges. And I mean, 80 helping 12,000, man, that's, uh, that's uh, it's impressive. Like just to, you know, just to be candid, <laughs> it's, it's super impressive and we'll do anything in our power that we can do to help. So, like I said, you guys are uh, yeah. top of the list in one of our, you know, you know, helping out the local community using technology, you know, it all kind of ties in together, man. And sometimes we got to realize that, you know, we're, we're, the, we're, we're kind of lucky to be doing what we're doing, you know, um, you know, some people fighting that struggle every day, man. I, could, I couldn't even imagine. So um, I'm going to cut you loose, man, but I'll do everything in my power to, to, to help, you know, either push employees and push, uh, uh, you know, stuff your way. And, but keep doing what you're doing. You know, seriously, hats off to y'all. All right. Thank you so much. And guess your human services. And you know what's really sad is our our, uh, our our new domain won't be up till next week. So it'll be guessyourmi.org. Um, but uh, keep keep supporting. And, and I just appreciate all of you and everything you all do out there. Yeah, I'm at jvshumanservices.org. And it, it forwards over to it. So, yeah, you'll get there. It, it'll but, uh, get there. Guess, guess your MI, you said, .org? GuessYourMI.org will we'll have at least a landing site next week. You know, we need some IT guy to help us out, but we'll get there. Uh, I think we know a couple. <laughs> I think we know a couple if you need it. Let me know. Yeah, yeah. We're good. I mean, all the best. Hey, Paul Blatt, CEO, <laughs> right. Guess Your Human Services, formerly JVS. Uh, awesome talking to him. Uh, definitely look them up. They're, they're one of the great uh, nonprofits in Metro Detroit. Um, that's going to wrap things up for this episode 443. On behalf of Bob and Randy, do us all a favor. Drink up your drinks. Get your phone numbers. You don't got to go home. You just got to get the hell out of here. See you next week. Drive careful. Beat it.